and do have at least something like a block handy. And what we will do this morning to start is make use of these props. So go ahead and elevate your seat. Have that block handy. Let's come into our little check-in. Find your two sitting bones left and right. Balance your weight out side to side. Feel your thigh bones relaxing toward the earth. And imagine that you have a little belt on over your hip bones that ties in the front and, and you're just gently knitting that belt a little tighter. So you're getting a sense of moving the two bones in the front of your pelvis lightly toward each other, which should help to tone and engage a deep sense of stability across the band at the low belly in front of the spine. Lift up through the top of your head from there and begin to notice what you notice, following your attention through your breath and into your body. I invite you to breathe in through your nose and out through your nose. And if you have an ujjayi practice, constrict the base of your throat so that you can listen to the sound of your breath as it moves in and back out. So that light constriction does two things. It gives us a sound to anchor our awareness onto. It also lengthens the inhalation and the exhalation. Slow, steady, rich with attention. At the base of your next exhalation, pause yourself empty. Draw in just a little bit of breath through your nose. And then just a little bit more. And then breathe in until you're at that full point again. And this time just open your mouth and let your breath out. So we'll do these light pauses in three steps. Squeeze empty through your nose. Inhale maybe about a third and pause. Two thirds, pause. Stay soft at your shoulders. Breathe in till you're full. This time through the nose, soft, long, steady, enriched breath, squeezing it out. Inhale about a third, pause. Two thirds, pause. All the way in. Hold. Long, slow exhalation. We're going to add an arm movement to this, and it's a very gentle arm movement with our Veloma Pranayam three-part breath. In that first third, as you inhale, go for a stretch forward through your arms. Reach into your fingertips. In the second third, reach your arms out to the side. Stretch into the thumbs. And then on that last increment, inhale and sweep your arms up and overhead. As you exhale, pull your prayer through your heart. Inhale a third forward. Two thirds side. All the way in, overhead. Prayer through the heart to exhale. Three more, inhale a third forward. Shoulder heads plug in, two thirds to the side. Palms face up, all the way full arms overhead. Reach, exhale, pulling back down to the heart. 
a third forward to the side. Feel your side ribs expand all the way overhead. Back to the heart, exhale. One more on your own, feeling like you're drawing those lines along the hands. Change the cross of your legs. Sweep your arms up and overhead, inhale. Then bend your left elbow, take a hold of your left elbow with your right hand, turning the elbow lightly in toward you. And then twist a little to the right. There's a very minor twist here. Press down into your left hip. Inhale, grow a little bit taller. And as you exhale, go ahead and drop your left hand to your right knee, finding that full rotation. Pick your knees up a little higher. Wrap your right hand to the outside of your left knee. Inhale. And as you exhale, press your knees toward the earth, drawing your spine forward. Drop your chin into your chest. Let your head be heavy. And as you inhale, try to pick up your back floating ribs. So breathe into the back line. As you exhale, release. Take your arms forward and up. Inhale, bend in your right elbow. Turn it like a knob toward you and twist to the left. Really feeling the reach up into the right side of the waist. Plant your right sitting bone down. And as you release your right hand to your left knee, allow that to rotate you a little deeper. Pick your knees up an inch higher so that you can bring your left hand around into the outside of the opposite knee. Inhale. And as you exhale, drag yourself into flexion. Drop your chin. Actively, with a little bit of effort, lift up your back floating ribs. Breathe into the spaciousness across that tailbone to low back band. And as you exhale, release. You're going to straighten your left leg forward. Bring your block or stacked books just to the outside of your left thigh. And I'd like the height to be about in line with your thighs. So you might be at the middle height, you might be at the lower height, you might stack two, three, four books. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh so that the entire pinky toe side of the foot is supported. And as you push down into the pinky toe side of your foot, plant your sitting bones into the earth and make sure you haven't dropped your weight into your low back. Your weight is still up onto your sitting bones. Fingertips come to the side of your chest. Inhale, turn your left toes back, squeeze your right pinky toe down, and as you exhale, tip forward over a hip hinge without rounding your back. So you know what that feels like to round, but you're keeping your back flat. Turning over the crease of your hips a little deeper. Can you hold your flat spine and as you inhale, get a sense of that elevation at your back floating ribs, getting a little taller. Squeeze into the pinky toe side of that front foot. Inhale, lift up and just take a brief twist, left hand across to the right knee. Inhale here. This time the right hand will come to the bottom of the foot. Inhale, and as you exhale, go ahead and let yourself round a little bit. Let your head drop. Gently pulling your hands toward each other. So you're squeezing the knee and the sole of the foot together. Inhale, bring yourself up. Kick your right leg forward. Move your support to the outside of your thigh and cross your left ankle onto that support. You really want to make sure the entire outer foot has something to press into from the pinky toe to the outer heel. Shift your weight into your two sitting bones. You're not rocking onto your tailbone and then place your fingertips onto the ground. Inhale, lift up your heart. It's just across that hip crease that you hinge forward. If you're trying to go forward by bending at your spine, pick up a little bit and find that true hinge. And that's the place that you'll stay and explore. Continue to press the pinky toe side of your foot into your block. 
Give yourself a couple of breaths here. Feel for a little light elevation through those back floating ribs. Steady Ujjayi breath. Pressing down active through the foot. As you inhale, come up, bring your right hand across to your left knee. And then bring your left hand across to the sole of the foot. It's as though you could narrow your shin bone as you press the two hands toward each other, round forward, drop your chin, and gently squeeze. Squeezing that shin as though it could. As you inhale, bring yourself up. Exhale, kick your legs to straight. Gently bending your knees, reach your hands down the shins, down to the feet, squeezing your legs towards straight to pull into a Paschimottanasana, seated forward fold. Again, really feel for that lift of your back ribs. Breathing across and from under the kidneys. Get a little bit lower. And imagine again that little belt in the front of the pelvis that you're tightening. So these two frontal hip bones narrow lightly toward the navel center. And it's that action of engaging the deep abdominals, transverses abdominis, that actually will draw you a little bit deeper into your fold. Engage the belly and see if that moves your chest closer to your thighs. Slowly bring yourself up. You'll come off of your support. Turn around and come onto your back. Setting your feet onto the earth, interlace your hands behind your head. Give yourself a moment just to settle your tailbone. And as you exhale, curl your head and chest up and forward. Tailbone is heavy. Back ribs are lifting and the deep abdominal is engaging. So the belly button is moving in toward the low spine and then up toward the heart, kind of like the letter J. Breath in, and as you exhale, twist, bring your right elbow across, press your right hip down. Inhale, center, exhale, twist, left elbow across, left hip presses down. Inhale, center, exhale, across. Feel the opposing hip, anchoring you when you twist, maybe even holding your shoulder blade slightly off of the mat as you go side to side. Even when you come to center, there's that slight elevation off of those shoulder blades. And let's do one more to each side. So one more to the left and then one more to the right. And come back. Hug your knees into your chest. Take a breath in. Exhale. Send your fingertips forward. Reach into those fingertips. Slowly kick your legs to straight. Pushing the heels to the sky and the thigh bones toward your hips. And then send your arms up and behind your ears, holding that lift off your shoulder blades. Interlace your hands behind your head and slowly resist. It's a resistance to the earth. Knees into chest, head down, inhale here. Exhale, curl. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, legs straight, squeeze. Inhale, bring your arms up alongside your ears without lowering. Exhale, slowly resist yourself to the earth. Take a breath in to prepare. Exhale, curl. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, feet to the sky. Inhale, arms alongside your ears. Hands behind your head. Exhale, knees into chest. One more time. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, curl. Inhale, reach your arms forward. Exhale, kick your legs to the sky. Inhale, arms alongside your ears. 
Exhale, hands behind the head, pull the knees into the chest, lower. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, curl, this time hands onto your shins and kick your shins forward until your knees are right over your hips. So it picks you up even higher. Hold your height, squeeze your thighs, and then as you inhale, burst your feet and hands away from each other. As you exhale, hands back to the shins, pull yourself a little deeper. Inhale, feet forward, arms back. Exhale, wrap it around, squeeze a little higher. Can you hold your newest height as you inhale, burst. Exhale, around two more times. Inhale, burst. Exhale, wrap and squeeze. Last time, inhale, burst. Exhale, wrap and squeeze. Pull yourself a little higher. And lower your head and chest to the ground. This time, squeezing your knees into your belly. Apanasana. Draw your shoulder heads down. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh. And slowly drop your legs, keeping that right ankle crossed. Drop your legs to the left. Grab a hold of the ankle when it lands with your left hand and press your top knee gently away from your body. Turn your head to look right. Keep that top foot on the ground. And then wiggle walk your bottom leg back so that your right hand can reach down and grab a hold of your bottom ankle. And squeeze your bottom thigh bone into the earth. So both legs are pressing away from the belly. Soften your upper arms toward the ground. Give yourself a moment to breathe into that. And you'll keep your head looking to the right. You'll just drop your knees together in a twist so the knees will meet. Simple spinal twist. As you exhale, come back to center. Hug your knees. Cross your left ankle over your right thigh. Give yourself a moment to feel that stretch. Reclining pigeon here. And then you'll keep the unit of your legs exactly as they are, but drop your legs over to the right, catching a hold of your ankle with your right hand so that that top foot can stay down. And then you'll press your top knee just energetically. Actually feel it moving away from you. Squeezing the thigh bone away from the belly. Turn your head to look left. Then wiggle walk your bottom leg back, back, back until you can reach your left hand down, grab a hold of that ankle and squeeze the legs away from the belly button. Relax your left ear, press your shoulders lightly into the ground. Find your breath. With your next exhalation, keep your head as it is, drop your knees together, finding your twist. Simple twist. Come back to center. Hug your knees into your chest. This time, set your feet on the ground. Lift into a bridge pose. And we'll be here for about a minute. So go ahead and soften your toes. And kick your heels into the earth. Can you get a sense of your heels squeezing back toward you? Toward your shoulders. And as you do that, you'll even feel your kneecaps moving forward which helps to deepen the stretch at the front of the body. Give yourself a few breaths like this, long, steady, ujjayi breaths. Pick up your hips a little higher by deepening your tailbone into your body. Use your breath as your anchor again. Come back into that practice of listening, lengthening, Anchoring. In the next round or so, we're go round or so, we're going back into that Veloma Pranayam, that three-part breath. If you'd like to, and we'll just do two rounds. Exhale your breath all the way empty. It's a gentle variation here. Inhale just about a third, two thirds. And until you're full, feel that lift of your tailbone. Exhale your breath out. 
One more like this, inhale a third, two thirds, all the way in, tailbone up and into the body, inner thighs narrow. And this time as you exhale, go ahead, release your hips to the earth. Drop over to one side, press up. Turn to face the front of your mat. Separate your feet a little bit wider than your hips so your toes point lightly out. Your knees are looking at your toes. Grab a hold of the backs of your thighs as you inhale, lift up your heart. Try to keep your spine nice and long. Exhale, release your fingertips in front of you. A third forward, a third out, a third up overhead. And as you exhale, you're going to come into Navasana Boat Pose. This is called Breath of Joy. And we're meeting Breath of Joy with this deep abdominal strengthening. So the Navasana is optional, but it is there for you. You can keep your feet on the ground the whole time. So it looks like this, a third, two thirds. Up, exhale, squeeze. Continue. Legs can be bent or straight. One more. Hold. Cross your ankles. Come forward onto your hands and knees, and then tuck your toes, press into down dog, really stretching into that back. Let your head drop, breathe into your back ribs, and press your sitting bones back and up. Walk your hands toward your toes, and as you do so, you're looking at your feet, Separate your feet wider than your hips and turn your toes out, kind of like where you were a moment ago. Slowly bend your knees and come into a malasana squat. So the hips are all the way low. If you need a blanket underneath your heels, you can get that for yourself. Walk your hands right between your feet and then pull the ground toward you with your fingertips and pick your hips up in line with your knees. So we'll call this Ardha Malasana, Half Malasana, the hips are exactly in line with the knees and you're pulling your fingertips back as though you could drag your mat between your heels. Coil your heart forward. As you exhale, turn your toes in, fold forward, straighten your legs. Wide Uttanasana, standing forward fold. We're going into a little flow like this. Inhale, sweep your arms all the way up. Spin your heels in and your toes out. Exhale, Malasana, hips all the way down. Hips in line with the knees, pull the fingertips back. Ardha Malasana, inhale, spine straight. Turn your toes in, exhale, wide Uttanasana. Inhale all the way up, toes out. Exhale, Malasana. Ardha Malasana, push your shin bones back, push your fingertips back, send your heart forward. Exhale, Uttanasana, toes in. Inhale, lifting overhead, Urdhva Hastasana. Toes out, exhale, Malasana. So you feel the hip work beginning. Inhale, pull your fingertips back, pull your shin bones back and your heart forward. Exhale, spin and fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, toes out, Malasana. Inhale, Ardha Malasana, pull your fingertips back. Exhale, toes spin in, fold. We're going to pick up the pace now on your breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, half. Exhale, inner thighs back. Inhale up. Exhale out. Halfway. Spin it in, up, out with the toes, halfway, spin in, 
One more. Halfway. Spin in. We're coming into the halfway lift. Inhale. Turn your toes out. Bend your knees. Get your hips in line with your knees. Continue to pull your fingertips back. Imagine you could drag your mat between your feet. Send your heart forward and then look forward a little bit. Now can you breathe your back ribs up and off of your sacrum? Take your weight out of your toes and into your heels and press your shins back. And as you exhale, walk your hands forward. Turn your toes to parallel and continue to walk into downward facing dog. At down dog, you can walk your feet back to hip width apart or you can stay wide, it's up to you. Five breaths here, pressing your hips back and up. Feel a little bit of spaciousness at the back of your heart and actively wrap your outer arms down. Wrap your triceps down, rooting into thumb pointer finger. Get stable on your left foot. So walk your left foot in if you need to. And cross your right ankle in front of your left shin so your right knee points out. If it feels open enough in your right thigh that you can actually step your ankle above your left knee, do that. But if you need to keep it below the shin, on the shin, then keep it there. Press your hip bones back. Keep that right ankle over the left thigh, kind of like where it was when you had that block on the ground supporting you. And as you inhale, shift into a plank pose, heart forward. As you exhale, shift back to down dog. Inhale, shift forward, plank pose, tailbone into the body. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, plank pose, pull the ground toward you. Exhale, draw your hips back. Inhale, plank, hands pull toward the back of the mat. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, plank pose, hold. Squeeze your right knee into your belly, pointing it forward. Then step your foot between your hands. Take your back heel to the ground and slowly start to straighten your right leg coming into your trikonasana triangle pose. Wrap that right sitting bone toward the sky. Turn your chest a little higher. Send your left arm over your ear. Go for a stretch here. As you exhale, bend your right knee. Take your right elbow above the knee joint and along the inner thigh line and turn the right palm to face the sky. Bring your left hand back up in line with your shoulder. And as you inhale, it's like you're pushing your elbow into that inner thigh and squeezing the thigh bone right back into the elbow. Then you can start to straighten the leg again, but you're not pushing your knee down to straighten your leg. You're lifting the sitting bone. And do that again, bend the knee. Pressing the sitting bone up and back. One more time, bend your knee. Press your sitting bone up and back. This time, release your hand without looking down. Maybe even close your eyes, and this is the challenging part. Bend the knee and come into Ardha Chandrasana. The ground is right there, so trust that. Building the faith in what's supporting you, whether it's visible or invisible. Finding your Ardha Chandrasana. Can you squeeze your thigh bones back? Look down, open your eyes and send your left arm a little higher, brightening up that shoulder. As you exhale, bend your right knee a lot. Step your left foot as far back as it'll go, land in warrior two, settling into that shape so that the right thigh bone drops a little bit and the side waist lifts up a little bit. Full breath in, full breath out. Imagine from the sitting bone to the knee, you're still pressing a little bit under you. And then imagine that little belt across the front of the pelvis getting a little narrower. So that whole inner thigh, pelvic floor, deep belly is awake. Spin your hands to the earth. Step to plank pose and hold your plank pose. 
Bend your elbows one inch, pulling the hands toward the toes. Inhale, press up. Bend your elbows one inch, pulling your hands toward your toes. Did your head drop? Keep your head in line with your heart. Press up. One more time, bend your elbows one inch, head is in line with the heart, and the spine is between the shoulder blades. Now really squeeze your hands toward your toes. Press up, draw back to downward facing dog. Center your right foot a little bit, cross your left ankle in front of the shin. Just feel for whether you can bring that ankle higher up over your knee and onto your thigh. And if you can, that's where it'll land. If it's uncomfortable, go back to the shin, just not against the kneecap. Make sure those left toes are really stretching back toward the knee and inhale, shift, plank pose. Hands pulling toward the feet, heart forward. Exhale back, lift your hips. Inhale, plank pose, tailbone into the body, heart forward. Exhale back. Inhale, plank, hands pulling toward the toes and the heart moving up and through the window of the arms. Exhale back. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Come forward and squeeze your left knee into your chest so it points forward. Then step your left foot. Spin your back heel to the ground and straighten up into your triangle pose. Trikonasana. Send the right arm over the ear, breathing open across that right side. Press into your back foot, start to bend your left knee, bringing your left elbow up and above the knee joint and along that inner thigh line, palm faces the sky. Bring the right arm in line with the shoulder. Kick that left elbow into the thigh and squeeze the thigh back into the elbow, all the way from the sitting bone to the knee. So it's not just at the knee, it's the sitting bone as well. Now hold that and start to straighten your left leg by lifting your sitting bone up. Bend the knee, push into your back foot, lift your sitting bone up. Bend the knee, squeeze, squeeze. Lift the sitting bone up, melt into triangle, inhale. Close your eyes, trust, maybe stay closed, come into Ardha Chandrasana. Once you're there and you feel the stability that's supporting you, you can open your eyes and look down, but straighten up your limbs. Press them in all opposite directions. Find another breath here. Enliven that back heel, push it back. As you exhale, bend your left knee a lot. Get light in your hand and step into warrior two Really deep, really low warrior two. Curling the left sitting bone lightly under you. So that the inner thigh is nice and engaged. Get that sense of narrowing, knitting those frontal hip bones. And in that action, you can drop your legs a little more and lift your spine a little more. One more breath. Soft toes, strong heels. Hands come down, step to plank pose. This time you can bend your elbows one inch, two inches, or all the way to chaturanga, but we are pushing back up. Get that sense of hands dragging toward toes. Two more, a little or a lot. Kind of testing how low you can go while maintaining that Pull of the hands back, that isometric engagement. Downward facing dog. Shift into plank pose. Lower all the way to the belly. If you need to use your knees, use your knees. Point your toes. Inhale, lift into a very light cobra. Push into the tops of your feet. As you exhale, stay where you are, but get that pubic bone moving toward the navel and drop your tailbone into the ground. Find another breath in and exhale as you continue to squeeze your pubic bone towards your navel, lower your forehead. You're actually engaging up the front line to lower. Inhale to lift. 
Exhale, pubic bone squeezes to navel as you lengthen your spine, lowering your forehead. One more time, inhale, lift. Then walk your hands forward and a little out so you're kind of closer to the front edges of your mat. In a gentle, wide, spacious cobra, start to press a little higher. Wrap your triceps back. Send the back ribs up. Breathe into them. And then maybe pick up your head in line with the back of your heart to look forward. And as you exhale, center one forearm and then the other forearm into a sphinx pose. So we're going into a little bit of a cat-cow to deepen up the spine just a little bit more. Maybe it's the spine and the pelvis you'll be working here. And maybe it's even the belly. So I'll give us a couple of choices. As you inhale, look forward, pulling the forearms back. And this is choice number one, you can stay in Sphinx Pose. Or if you wanna do some movement, you can exhale, feel those back ribs lifting and drop your chin. Inhaling, coming forward and up, shoulder blades actively down the back. And exhale, front ribs to the back ribs, back ribs lifting to the sky. Those of you that wanna take it one step further, and it really is kind of a big step here, you can round your upper back, engage your belly, keep your legs stick straight, and come up onto the tops of your feet. Inhale, pelvis lands, heart lifts up. So the wave either stops at the pelvis or at the ankles. Inhaling, exhale. Feeling that opening across your back. One more time. Inhale, wave it through, shoulder heads drop back. Exhale, engage the belly. Pubic bone to navel. Inhale, sphinx pose. Exhale, lower down. Give yourself a moment to breathe across your low back. Slip your hands alongside your rib cage. Keep your toes pointed, making sure those big toes are pointing straight back from the knee. And as you inhale, hands pull toward those toes, lift up your heart. Keep your shoulder heads where they are. Exhale, let your belly lift your hips into downward facing dog. Take a breath in and a breath out, squeezing to empty. Slowly walk your feet forward to your hands, coming to the top of your mat and fold. Separate your feet a little wider than your hips. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, toes out, Malasana. Ardha Malasana, inhale. Wide Uttanasana, exhale. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, toes out, Malasana. Ardha Malasana, pulling your fingertips back. Exhale, Uttanasana, one more time. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, spin out, drop in. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Come all the way up, inhale, step your feet together. Exhale, hands to your heart. Surya Namaskara A, once. Right into Surya Namaskara B, once. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway, heart is forward. You can step or jump into Chaturanga, pulling your hands toward your toes. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Press your upper arm bones back. As you exhale, without dropping your shoulders forward, let your hips take you into down dog. Find one breath in this. Back ribs wide and generous. Exhale all the way empty and squeeze. Step or jump your feet forward. Lift halfway, inhale. Exhale, fold. Come all the way up, squeezing through the feet to reach. Hands to heart, bend your knees, find your chair pose. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Exhale, fold forward, legs straight. Inhale, lifting halfway. Chaturanga, exhale. Now you can always skip these chaturangas and step to down dog. Breathe into your body. From your down dog, step your right foot between your hands, back heel spins down, one breath coming up into warrior one, reach tall. And as you exhale, wash it through. 
Meeting in downward facing dog, mindful of staying broad across those shoulders. Step your left foot forward, back heel spins, inhale, warrior one. Can you draw your tailbone into your body? Exhale, wash it through. Your breath, listening to that rhythm, lengthening it. At the bottom of your exhalation, step or jump forward. Inhale to come up halfway. Unlock your knees and engage your belly, folding in your Uttanasana. Bend your knees, chair pose. From here, we're going back into that breath of joy, but using chair pose. And if it's too much in chair pose, just come to straight legs. Otherwise, we'll do five rounds here. Rounding on your exhalation. And exaggerating the back bend on the last inhale, this one. Two more. Hands to heart. Press into your left foot, cross your right ankle over your left thigh, and sit back. Wrap your left hip crease back. Without pressing your right knee down, in fact, pick it up a little bit, can you press your ankle into your thigh bone? And then bring your hands to your front leg. So the right hand is on the knee and the left hand is on the foot and squeeze those two together. Keep that as you press into your left foot, maybe start to straighten your leg and hug your right leg high. If it's too hard, just stay where you were a moment ago. And if you can, you'll again bend your left knee, feeling that buoyancy held from behind. Take a hold of the outer edge of your right foot with your right hand, left hand comes to the left hip, and slowly kick your leg out and to the side. So the second step of Uttita Hasa Padangusasana, out to the side. Draw your tailbone forward. Exhale, cross the ankle over the thigh, sit back, and this time fold forward. Optional to have a block underneath your hands. You don't need it, but it does help. It brings the ground to you. Squeezing your left thigh bone back. Fold. Breathe into those back ribs. And engage your belly a little bit so that you can draw yourself into your legs. Come up just enough that you can release your right foot. Do what you need to do. And fold. Come up halfway, Utkatasana chair pose. Press into your right foot, cross your left ankle over that thigh, and sit back, hands to heart. Again, wrap your right hip crease back. So you're not curling the hip forward. And think of getting your left knee a little higher. It's the ankle that presses into the right thigh bone rather than the knee that presses into the earth. You want your knee to actually be very gentle, soft, and not at its edge range, but maybe at 80% or even 70%. Then you'll bring your hands to the two bookends of your left shin, round your back a little bit, squeezing together here, and slowly, slowly, maybe picking the leg up. Maybe that works for you. Maybe you need to stay low. You can always come back down. You can also bend that right knee round a little bit more, feeling that spaciousness here at your low back and hip. Take a hold of your left outer foot with your left hand, right hand to the hip, 
and start to kick into that open variation of Utita Hasa Parangusasana. Take another breath here, wrap your left sitting bone forward, like in the triangle pose. Engage that inner thigh. And as you exhale, cross your ankle over your right leg again, sit back. Start to fold forward, allowing your head to drop here. Breathe into your back. Narrow and engage your deep abdominals to draw yourself into your legs. Bend your right knee so that you can release your left foot and fold. Lift up halfway. Turn your toes out, your heels in, and just back into that Ardha Malasana. Fingertips are pulling the ground toward you. Shin bones are kicking back. Spine is moving forward. You can stay here and then eventually flatten your hands and step back to plank pose, moving through vinyasa. Or you can walk your feet toward each other and start to work bakasana, knees up into the upper arms, finding your arm balance, Press your arms a little bit more towards straight. Breathe into your back ribs. And we'll shoot it back and move through vinyasa. Chaturanga. Urdhva Mukha. Really take your shoulder heads back. And try not to drop your shoulders forward here as your hips lift you into down dog. Kind of combs out that bakasana. Step your right foot forward. Warrior one, rise up. Bend your left elbow, turn your left elbow forward, and as you press your left elbow a little higher, breathe into your left side waist. Curl the sitting bone into the body. As you exhale, come forward and into a twist. Bring your left elbow to the outside of your right knee, hands together, turn your heart toward your thumbs. If you have a blanket handy and your knees are sensitive, You'll want to place the blanket underneath your back knee here. As you exhale, look down and take your fingertips to the earth. Pick up your back heel. So this is where that blanket can be underneath the knee. Bring your right shin, oh sorry, it would be under the right knee. Bring your right knee to the earth, directly underneath the hip. So it's not forward of the hip, it's under the hip. And then you're going to take your right foot across your mat as far as it'll go to the left. For some of us, it's just an inch or two. That's what's comfortable. For some of us, you can go further across. But wherever that is, make sure your, left, your right toes are pointed straight back from your knee. So you have this long inner shin line. No wrinkles at that ankle that you can see. Not doing this. As you inhale, send your heart a little forward. Now you're driving your right shin bone into the earth, wrapping your right hip crease back, but you're not flipping your tailbone to the sky. You're feeling your tailbone move into your body. From there, pick your back leg up. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe the toe stays down. If it's up, imagine somebody's grabbed a hold of your back ankle and they're just gently pulling it back and then forward. Not going down, just back. Now if you feel any discomfort in your bottom knee, don't do it. You will feel your edge. Breathe into that. One more breath. Back. And then come back forward and hold. Hold here. You can stay like this. You can set the toe back down. Or just one time, you can take your left knee up to your left elbow like that Bakasana Crow Pose. And bring your leg back. Spin the inner thigh up. Set the left toes down and shift that right shin forward for Pigeon Pose. Ekapada Raja Kapotasana folding forward. Please place a blanket or a block under the right hip if you need to. And if it doesn't feel good, just come on to your back. There's no reason to injure that front knee ever. 
Just listen to what it needs, taking the shape that is full of breath, rhythm and anchor. Walk your hands under your shoulders. Tuck your back toes under. Step into downward facing dog. Give yourself a moment to turn your inner thighs lightly back. Maybe the hips can wiggle a little right to left. Lower your elbows to the earth. Pulling the forearms toward the toes, finding a slight dolphin deepening. You can stay in down dog. You can even take a child's pose. Or you can hold this dolphin pose for another three breaths. Invite yourself into that deepening breath. Back ribs nice and open. Lower your knees. Keep your hips over your knees and slowly bring your hands out into a V shape. Gently resting the forehead onto a block or onto the earth. Third Tibetan prostration. Your hips are over your knees, not behind them. Breath is dynamic at the back. And walk your hands under your shoulders, downward facing dog. Step your left foot forward, warrior one, back heel spins down, inhale, rise up. Bend your right elbow and turn it like a knob toward the left. Press into your back foot. Breathe up through the right side body as the tailbone moves forward. And then exhale and shift your weight forward, bringing your right elbow to the outside of your left leg, finding a prayer twist. Keep wrapping your left sitting bone back as you turn your heart up. Toes can lighten, heels can firm. Bring your hands down, set up your blanket if you need it, spin your back heel up. So you want to support that left knee as you bring your left knee directly underneath your hip, not forward of your hip, but exactly underneath it. I like to walk my hands forward an inch or two, just helps the wrists out. And instead of kicking your left toes all the way across your mat, find a comfortable range wherever it needs to be so that you can push the shin bone down and point that left big toe away from the knee so there's no wrinkles in that inner ankle. Draw your tailbone into your body. Let your heart lift through the window of your arms and maybe pick your right leg up. If it doesn't work out for you, set the toes back down. No need to lift the leg. If the leg is lifted, imagine a hand gently drawing your heel back and then forward and back and forward. So you're up and over your hip. You're not sinking into your hip to do this, which is why it's so important to narrow these frontal hip bones toward each other in that little knit so the deep pelvis is supported. From the front, press back, hold. Good, coming forward, and just one time, bring that right knee to the right upper arm, squeezing the heel in, and back. Set the toes back down. Take your left leg forward into pigeon pose with support underneath the hip, or coming into reclining pigeon on your back. Let yourself soften here. Breathing across your low back and supporting yourself without really 
much sensation in that left knee at all. If you feel anything, just come on to your back, take reclining pigeon. It's a wonderful shape. And it's more important to have this deep practice of longevity, breath, awareness. Protecting your joints, strengthening where you can. All of this breath of joy flooding into the hips. Because the hips are really what carry us forward in life. So we want to feel that we are supporting ourselves energetically. Not just tightening, bearing in, creating obstacles, but being generous, being gentle, listening. Walk your hands in, tuck your back toes under, and step into downward facing dog. Gently, gently stretching the backs of your legs. So a few more options on this side. If you liked third Tibetan prostration, you can take that, dropping to your knees, stretching your arms forward, and resting your head. You can also take a child's pose. You can stay in downward facing dog for five breaths. You can lower into dolphin pose for five breaths. Or if you have an arm balance practice of Pinchamayarasana, you can step up into your forearm balance for five breaths of inversion here, deepening your tailbone toward your heels and getting a sense of pulling your elbows, pulling your forearms toward the back of your mat, away from your fingertips. So there's that same tractioning there's that same tugging to strengthen that whole front band. One more breath. Child's pose. Knees apart or knees together. Drop your arms alongside your body like tired wings. Letting your shoulders release toward the ground. We have one last kind of mini sequence here. Reach your arms forward, hands in line with the shoulders. Keep your forehead down for a moment and just push into your hands so that your forearms lift. Wrap your triceps down and stay connected to the inner hand, pointer, finger, knuckle. So the forearms are lifting, the hands are pushing. The triceps hug down. Move your upper arm bones a little away from each other. And as you push into your hands, lift up and find downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward. One breath for warrior one. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, pyramid pose. Hands to the ground. Step your back foot forward six to eight inches and straighten your front leg. Draw your right hip bone back. I like a block underneath my hand these days. You can inhale, lift up halfway, place your left hand onto the ground or onto a block and find twisting triangle, Parivrita Trikonasana. Reach your right arm up and open. Wrap that right hip back, take another breath and start to reach the top of your head in line with your heart. If it's coming forward, lean it back. Release and fold over your front leg. Step plank pose, inhale. Chaturanga, exhale. Urdhva Mukha, press those shoulder heads back. Exhale, hips take you to down dog. Step your left foot forward, warrior one, back heel down, rise up. Pyramid pose. Step your back foot in a touch. Straighten your front leg, fold. Wrap your left hip crease back. 
Soften your toes. And notice your jaw will probably soften too. Come up halfway, inhale. Whatever support you need for your right hand, bring your left arm up, Parivrita Trikonasana. Wrapping your left hip crease back, open across your heart. And start to bring your head in line with your heart. Sometimes the head drops forward in these twists. You want your head kind of to lean a little bit back as it stretches up and away from the chest. Soften your toes, press into your heels, and fold. Last time, through vinyasa, lowering, inhale, keep drawing your upper arm bones back as you exhale into down dog. Walk your hands about a third of the way down your mat. Not quite halfway, but about a third of the way down your mat. And either jump your knees between your hands, cross your legs and shift forward, or jump your feet all the way through, coming into a Dandasana seated staff pose as you inhale, lift up your heart. Draw your thigh bones down, pick up your spine. Exhale, Paschimottanasana, fold forward. If you want to bring your block with you, have it next to you, come onto your back, place your feet onto the earth. Bridge pose, come up. Now, this is where the block is optional. You can place it under your sacrum and enjoy a passive supported bridge pose here. It's a wonderful practice. And if you have the block under your sacrum, that's where you hang out. Whether we come up and down, the next round or two, you can stay right here and just enjoy it. If you don't have the block, lower. Bring your hands under your shoulders. And as you inhale, pull your elbows in, come to the top of your head, pick up your back floating ribs and lift into your back bend, Urdhva Dhanurasana. Root into the pointer finger knuckle and spin your triceps back. Lowering down, exhale. You'll take one last back bend. So your third back bend is up to you. Those of you in your support, you just get to hang out here. Another few breaths. All that hip work and hip opening can deeply unlock our back bends, especially when we couple that with a little bit of glute strength, which we definitely have done, right? Okay, lower yourself down. Slowly, slowly. Separate your feet as wide as your mat. Drop your knees to the left. The inner knee, the right knee. Press it a little bit away from the right shoulder. Change sides, drop your knees to the right. Inner knee, left knee, a little away from the left shoulder. So you're just thinking of lengthening this line. Come to center. Bring your knees together and drop your knees to the left. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to hold your knees to the left. And if you need to bring your spine into alignment, you can always bump your hips back a little bit. Look over your right shoulder for just a breath. 
As you exhale, spin your nose to point to the sky. Slowly stack your right knee onto your left knee. So it was staggered a moment ago, but now it's stacked. The knees are stacked. You'll feel your right shoulder lift up away from the ground. That's okay, let it. The knees stack exactly. They're actually going to stay stacked for the next little sequence. Bring your right hand onto your heart. Keep your knees stacked. Roll onto your left side and start to slip your right hand onto your left hand so you're in a little prayer. Then continue to walk your top fingertips forward, forward and away from your bottom fingertips until your forehead rolls to the ground. Now are your knees stacked? Continue to stack your knees, which in some cases means wrapping your right hip crease a little back. Keep walking that top hand out. Take a breath into those back floating ribs. Keep your knees stacked. Return your right hand, palm on palm. Return your right hand up your left arm bone to the heart, knees stay stacked. And out to the right. Once you come into that T shape, Allow your knees to unstack and melt your right shoulder back to the ground. Come to center. Balance out your pelvis. Then bring your knees in and over to the right. Again, I like to line up my spine here, so I like to bring my hips back a little. Open your arms into a T and for just a breath, look over your left shoulder. Point your nose to the sky. Stack your left knee onto your right knee, which will pick up your left shoulder. It's okay, let it do that for a breath. Let that left shoulder kind of open in the front. Then bring your left hand to your heart. Slowly rolling onto your right side, take your left palm on top of your right palm. Then start to walk your left hand out and beyond your right hand until your forehead rolls to the earth. Keep walking the left hand out. Breathe into your back floating ribs and if your hips have kind of crawled forward, stack your knees again, send your left hip directly on top of your right. Return the hand. Up the arm bone into the heart. Keep your knees stacked, bring your left arm to the left. Slowly unstack the knees so that your shoulder can melt down. Come to center. Take a symmetrical shape of your choosing. If you have a shoulder stand practice and you're craving it, you have about a minute to do that here. Otherwise, apanasana, just hugging your knees into your chest. And we'll do this, this last free choice, finding symmetry shape for just one minute. You can also come into a supta baddha konasana. Many shapes you can take here that are symmetrical, nourishing, and restorative. And I will let you kind of work that sequence through and make your way into Shavasana, turning your palms to face up. Really, it's, it's when you're ready, as you're ready to drop your body let your toes release, let your leg bones release, and feel the back of the heart wide and on the ground, supported. The back of the pelvis wide and on the ground, supported.
feeling the earthiness of the body at the pelvis. Feeling the dance of breath, air, circulation at the heart. And how the earth and the air, the atmosphere, move together in a very balanced rhythm. A kind of gentle moving dance. that you can feel playing out even along the surface of your skin. Notice how alive your hands are. Bend your knees and place your feet onto the earth. Take your time, roll to one side and come up to seated. Bringing yourself into a cross-legged position where your legs can root, your breath can lift, and your spine can hold the balance. Bring your hands together in front of your heart, honoring all of yourself, the parts you would like more of and the parts you would like less of, all of yourself. In the process of attuning inward, take a breath and let it out. Gentle rub of your palms. Bring one hand over your heart and then the other and take one more big breath. Bow into yourself. Coming up, Ata Yoga Anushasana Yogas Chitta Vritti Nurodaha. Here begins your practice. Namaste.